Hi everyone, my name is Leah Mueller and I'm a dietitian nutritionist. Um, I'm trained in the medical and also the naturopathic philosophy. So the five tips, um, steps to change that we're going to be talking about on the today's online prosperity show will give you a rundown on how to look after yourself when you're in a high stress position of being an entrepreneur. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today I've brought you the dietitian and nutrition, Leah. Leah, how are you doing, my love? I'm great. How about you? Fantastic. Thank you so much for taking your time to be on the show with us today. Now, viewers, if you're watching this show right now, I've got a question for you. What good is success if you're not healthy enough to enjoy it? Now, you would understand that if you're an entrepreneur, it takes a lot of dedication to build a successful business. Now, you've been working um, maybe a lot harder than everybody else. You're pushing yourself to the limits. There are always going to be downsides to living this kind of lifestyle. And if you want to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable, never overlook the importance of health. Now, that's the reason why I've brought to you the expert herself, Leah, who's going to be telling us a little bit about what she does and how she helps um, people to go on a path to a um, healthier and happier existence. Now, Leah, I could go on and on about the importance of, um, you know, how, you know, being healthy and also uh, good performance as an entrepreneur. Tell us a little bit about yourself first and what it is that you actually help people with. Okay, so being a, a dietitian nutritionist, so I'm medically trained, I understand both the medical model plus also the naturopathic model because I've taught naturopaths and herbalists in my past. Um, I bring both sides of the story together and I help people explore both the reasons why they are not feeling so great, so energetically, emotionally, physically, their food, their stress level. So I look at the whole person person and then we work out a strategy of change to make sure that they get back onto their path and what they want to do you know the high energy be able to think that their, their gut's not always upset and annoying that they can do the things that they want to do mentally emotionally and physically uh, easier absolutely that's what i do <laughs> absolutely thank you so much for that now the go-to thing for any entrepreneur uh, when they're thinking of health is uh, maybe just exercising and and putting it as part of their daily routine. How important is that, uh, you know, especially for maintaining a positive mindset for entrepreneurs? Well, it, exercise is important for everyone. You know, even just, you know, 10 minutes, three, maybe three times a day, like just literally get off your desk, move to the kitchen or go outside, see the, sit in the, in the garden for five minutes, watch the trees and the birds and all that sort of thing. Just really disconnect the mind and you know, get the mind out of the space that you're thinking, so it creates more energy there. It also opens up the framework which the, the mind is working through. So even just short bursts of 10 minutes at a time is enough to physically activate the met metabolic system. It helps flush the blood, it helps to get the detox systems activated too. So exercise from a perspective is useful, but you don't have to do you know, the whole slog and out the gym because an hour block in our day is, is fairly huge. Absolutely. Really? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, Lear, I know myself being an entrepreneur, I mean, ever since I started, I was on a diet of soda, coffee, replacing it with water here and there, and uh, sugar and a few sweets. How important is it um, as an entrepreneur to be eating healthy and um, as a part of, of living a healthier lifestyle? It's pretty essential, to be honest, for everyone. Um, but I think because we just tend to be type A people, you know, really high energy, brain orientated, really focused, dedicated, uh, we sit a lot or we're standing at the computer if we're lucky to have a, a standing table. But you know, we need the nutrients to be able to just think. So we, if we're living on caffeine and high sugar, we're not getting into the nutrients, none of the cofactors, the minerals to actually do the work. And then we tend to put on weight and then we stress our bodies, you know, increase the risk of uh, metabolic diseases and pre-diabetes, which then stresses the body again. So we've already pretty much stressed, you know, because we're on target, we've got deadlines or we've got belief systems that we must be doing this, this and this. Then we get frustrated when we don't. And then if we're eating poorly when we're not exercising, then we have a physical stress compounding the, the mental stress. 
And then often our guilt system will kick in, which is also a very poisonous emotion, and it just compounds everything. So if we're eating well most of the time, okay, um, so I like to use for 80 to 90% of, of the big picture, if that is really on par most of the time, then we can have a few days where we're feeling crappy and we're really wallowing because we're, you know, we're emotionally, mentally drained and so we just eat the crap food to make ourselves feel better. Absolutely. All that comfort food that is, is part of it. Um, we can get away with it. You know, our body doesn't suffer as much as we're constantly doing that. And there's also a huge association between food chemicals and the way we feel. So there is a link, and that's coming out in the research, what our gut is interpreting and what it's the chemicals in our digestive system from our food and the microbiome. It talks directly back up to the brain and vice versa. So there's this huge bi-directional communication. So if our food is poorly, creating really poor neurotransmitters, that is then talking to the brain and telling us to be depressed or anxious or flat or tired or stressed, then we're doing ourselves a disservice. You know, we want to be fully functional most of the time and we're just, you know, putting a disservice into our body by eating poorly. Great stuff. So from what I'm hearing, you can actually manage the stress um, that you can be causing us within a business just by looking at your diet. It is a definitely a contributing factor. Yes. Absolutely. Great stuff. And um, from what I'm hearing, from what you're saying, exercise, right foods, and just general well-being, um, has that got anything to do um, with the environment that we're, 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 we're working in? Or does any of that contribute to the stress as well? Yeah, the environment um, has to impact directly because we're surrounded by it. We're energetic beings at the end of the day. You know, we are just molecules clumped up together to form the shape that we are. So we work on the principles of that. So if we're in an environment where other people are upset or are anxious, it just can certainly compound. And if you're an empath, you know, you take on other people's feelings. Um, the physical environment, you know, how much sunlight do you actually get? What are the materials of the house or the building that you're living in too? How much nature compared to synthetics? It really does make an impact because we are just sharing our molecules all the time. So who are you working with or living with or associating with? And the thing that's been coming up a lot for me, not for myself personally, but as a message is, you know, we are some of the five people we associate with most of the time. So who do we want to hang around? And as entrepreneurs, we know that we need to be those who, you know, hanging out with people who have already done what we're wanting to do or in a similar class, so to speak. And, and maybe not so much with the people who are Debbie Downers and don't want to do this and don't do that or everything's just a problem, too much, too much effort and it's just too freaking hard. You know, we actually need to hang around people and environments that are a bit more stimulating and encouraging and supporting. And, and I think that sometimes can be the harder thing, especially if you're working to when you're starting out, you know, working, doing your, your day job and then having to come home, look after a family and then also then go and do your own passion and be positive all the time. So it's not an easy balancing act when you've got so many plate, big plates in the air. Um, and so we just really need to sometimes step back and really prioritise and really take stock on what we can do. And the other big thing is how much history or baggage have we accumulated over time that we need to literally let go of and transform and make positive um, instead of letting it be a limiting factor emotionally and in our brain at the same time. Absolutely. So basically, your, uh, in your own words, the journey that you take uh, people is going to lead them to a more empowered, more meaningful life and not just accepting the you know, current state of health um, and it would definitely define them with their health, their happiness, and the life that they actually want uh, to be. What is the opportunity cost of not having all of those things uh, as a person or as a business person? Well, it can be, um, you know, priceless. If you, if you don't have the peace of mind, if, you've, if you're constantly coming against the blocks because you haven't like, transformed the, the, the belief systems to, to be more positive and more abundant, and that's a huge barrier first up. You know, I, I did that for quite a few years in the last, um, something tripped at the last two. So I know firsthand what it feels like to be wanting to do everything. You are physically doing it all right, but the, the underlying baggage is just anchoring there. So if we don't look after our bodies, if we do get sick and diseased, then as you said in the beginning, then we, are we going to enjoy the fruits of our labour as much as we would like? 
if we physically don't have the energy to to go rock balling or something like that because we've got the time to do it, or if you can't get on the plane because you're too big, or you can't walk, you know, up the, the stairs in, in Rome because you've got arthritis or it's flaring up, or not knowing which foods are causing the flare up, then, you know, it's, it's one of the, again, those balancing acts, which is the priority on the big picture. Is it the money? Is it the quality of life? Absolutely. Now, Leah, maybe somebody's actually watching this show and they've actually, um, you know, the pin just dropped and they realize they've not been looking after themselves and they have not been doing anything in that sort of department. Um, you do have a 12 week program that people can jump onto. Tell us a little bit about what is involved and how people can get a, a hold of that. Okay, so it's an online program. Um, the, the top tier is where you get to work with me in six individual consultations. So there's, there's three nutritional based or medically based. There's the three um, sessions of counselling, including EFT. And then you've got the 12 um, modules that you actually work through online at your own pace. And obviously there's email contact in between. It's, it's fairly comprehensive um, because we look at, you know, the genetics, um, the memory lines through the genes, things like that. We look at the food choices. We look at what are the sabotages. We know a lot of the mindset as to why and then releasing and transforming a lot of that. And the food component is really looking at, you know, what are you actually eating? Are there any obvious trigger foods? Do we need to, in fact, move some foods that are upsetting the body? And then um, I just take them through as a normal uh, dietetic client. Um, that, that component can be also put through uh, their private health insurance because it's, I can actually sign it off as a clinical session. So there is a bit of rebate to the package um, price if that's of interest and if they've got private health or dietitian. So that's a bonus, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. So they, they get the book, they get the journal, they get, you know, 12 weeks of um, mindset looking through, questioning themselves. Um, the, the journal is actually very, very comprehensive because it's, you know, they've got a, a, a record of what's called accountability. They write down their food choices, their activity levels. Have they self-cared today? Have they actually looked at who pissed them off and what did they do? Who did they talk to? How did they talk to them? Who actually be, needs to be forgiven? Who needs to be part of the solution? So it's really looking at who, how can they empower themselves to get them to where they really want to be. So it's not just food, it's not just looking at the basics of mindset, it's really about challenging them as individuals, who and what they are, who they want to become. Absolutely, so, I mean, obviously, that is good in and of itself because, you know, ultimate healing and like you're saying, back to wellness is an inside job. And if somebody's really, really now about to send over their credit card to you, um, <laughs> how can they get a hold um, of this uh, 12 week course? Okay, so I do, if they want to work with the individual, I want to um, interview them to make sure that we are a good fit because it's nothing worth committing and spending a lot of money if we're not a good fit. Um, so on the main website, uh, that is the first step. So stepstochange.com.au. Um, I believe you're going to also link the actual program. So the uh, the actual program outline is stepsustain.com.au um, slash reclaim me. So it's all about reclaiming themselves to be who they want to be. Absolutely. Well, Leah, I can't thank you enough for your time on the show today. And if you're watching this um, right now, you can actually understand that ultimate healing and back to wellness is actually an inside job. And this only happens when you connect with your own truth and your own life journey. So pretty much now is the time to listen to your body, learn the skills um, to listen to the messages, and then actually learn the skills to release these blocks um, that are changing your biochemistry that are you know, that's making you feel inadequate or not perform well. Because if you cannot feel well, you cannot do well. Now, Liz, right. I mean, obviously we've yes. had you for this time of the session. What is your normal go-to advice, uh, you know, to people that are just, uh, you know, I don't know how I feel today. Uh, maybe something is not really working out. Could it be their diet? Could it be their, um, their mindset? Could it be, you know, their body? What, what do you normally just um, um, give people advice to, to do in order to take care uh. of themselves? That's a, that's a really tri tricky one without um, having at least a brief conversation with them to f almost feel where they're at. So just as a standard, I suppose, you know, just sit, close your eyes, 
go inside, do the body scan and just talk to the feelings that are coming up. You're aware of there discomfort or tension and have a chat with them and say, what does it need? Ask it what it needs. Um, if you know that your diet's poorly, then just eat, eat really basic foods. You know, go down to your local shop and get a juice um, first thing in the morning if you don't want to do it at home. Eat your salads, eat your meat that isn't totally, you know, seasoned. Or just come back to what we were eating in the 1950s. They didn't have soda every day. They didn't have lots of coffee. They didn't have their, their chocolate chips, lollies and cakes and biscuits. They were all treat foods for Christmas and birthdays occasions. So if we go back to the 1950s style of eating and we don't have to have all these superfoods that cost the earth, it's just about basic fruit, veg, meat, simple, feed the body, give the nutrition it needs. If you're on lots of medication, then you know book in because if you're on lots of meds, it's interfering with your liver and digestive function full stop and it needs to be reviewed. No questions asked. Absolutely. I mean, like what the doctor has prescribed or what Leah is saying there that running a business is very stressful and there's no denying that. I mean, if you're on a mission to create something that's going to be profitable and you're going to enjoy doing it in the process, you're going to have to take some time to relax and plug once in a while. Yes. And if you're going to be <laughs> suffering extreme burnout, which is going to happen, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs think they have to work nonstop. They have to put in the grueling hours. Mm. That's true. No. But you have to know when it's time to relax and recharge and eat well. Um, Cause yeah. as Leah says, if you don't do, if you can't look after yourself and feel well, you can't do well. Leah, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Look forward to it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you.